hey, if you use AI to write content for blog posts, then I'm going to share with you something amazing. ZimWriter, the AI writing software I created, has just been updated to version 9.0. I've been working on this update in secret for the past two months, finally ready to reveal it, and the power that it gives you is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. The biggest, it solves one of the biggest problems with AI. One of the biggest problems has been when you're writing blog posts, the AI, if it doesn't know about a topic, will start hallucinating. This update aims to solve that problem using something called SERP scraping. ZimWriter will actually go out to Google and perform a query for your blog post titles and then look at all the results and analyze all the results, summarize the results, look at the SEO keywords, the long tails, the short tails, look at the competition subheadings, and then use all that data to write the article. And the resulting article is amazing. It avoids a lot of the hallucinations that you might be accustomed to and the quality is absolutely amazing. It can finally do those deep dives into that content and not, not just surface level cursory overview because now the AI actually has meat to work with. And that's just one of the features in this update. The other really cool feature is called caching. Now it's not like an ATM that's gonna spit out money. Different kind of, that's a different kind of caching. Caching now inside of ZenWriter is ZenWriter will store that scraped SERP results and also score individual website scrapes and summaries in the database. So if you want to reprocess the article, whether it's just a one-off article inside of Penny Arcade or whether it's a full-blown SERP scrape or whatnot, it will save you a lot of time because all of that stuff is already saved in the database, ready to be reprocessed. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you this brand new super secret hidden feature that you probably would not find unless I brought it to your attention. And it's amazing. It's going to change the way AI works in your mind for your business. I can't wait to share it with you. This entire video, high level, it's going to be high level. Okay, I will have more deep dives coming later this week, later this month. Right now, I just want to share with you the new features inside of 9.0 and get you all excited. And this is Black Friday, so this is your Black Friday present. Let's dive in. Okay, so here is the article I had it right, MacBook Pro M3 versus MacBook Pro M2. The M3 chip just came out a couple weeks ago. The AI has no idea about this, but with SERP scraping, it can now write an on-point article about this particular question. Key takeaways, the M3 MacBook Pro offers 22 hours of battery life. It does, that's one more hour than the M2 and it uses three nanometer technology. As we go through the rest of the article, there's all kinds of really juicy nuggets in here that the AI would not know about, but for that SERP scrape that it that performed. There's a 40 core GPU inside of the M3 Max. TSMC is the one that made the, uh, the processor. Talks about the battery life, the price comparison. And these are actually FAQs from the people also ask inside of the Google SERP scrape. So how does ZimWriter do this, okay? How does it actually do this? So what happens is when you put your search query into like the writer, for instance, so MacBook Pro M3 versus MacBook Pro M2, and then you come over here and enable SERP scraping, all right, what will happen is Google will contact ScrapeOut. You need ScrapeOut to get this done, all right? Google will contact ScrapeOut. ScrapeOut will go to Google, perform this query, get all this data, feed it back into ZimWriter, will then analyze all this data, and then write that really amazing article. If you don't know what scrape out is, again, I mentioned that you do need that. Check this out. I, I don't want to make this a scrape out video, but you will need scrape out to do the SERP scraping and also YouTube and Amazon scraping. So you can click this button. We're in the options menu right here. You'll click set up scrape out. You'll click this buy a scrape out API key. And by clicking that button, it will unlock special pricing. See, here's the pricing tab. If you click here, you'll see a basic plan and a hobby plan. These plans are not available unless you click that button and then sign up through that option. Watch this, I'll open up incognito mode. So this is incognito mode. They don't have the $5 and $10 plans. These are plans just for ZimWriter people. This is not, I don't get any commission. This is not an affiliate thing. This is just something I worked out with the ScrapeOut team, who's awesome by the way, and gave us these special plans. So you'll need ScrapeOut to get this done. So bulk writer again, you can enable SERP scraping inside of here. There are some different options. You can read more about them inside of this, uh, this up here. Uh, but the long and short of it is you can choose to disable the people also ask and also disable the SEO keywords if you want to. Now let's go into the SEO writer. So SEO writer kind of works the same way, but a little bit different. So if you don't want to use SERP scraping, then nothing in here has changed. I didn't want to break this for anybody. And then you can fill this out however you'd like. But if you do want to SERP scrape, 
then you wanna click this button first. Now there's two options to go about this. This window looks a little bit different than the bulk, with the window in the bulk writer, because there's a button now. Scrape the SERP now. So if you press it, what's gonna happen is ZimWriter will close all these windows and scrape the SERP, and then open it up when it's done, and it will fill this with some background information, fill this with competition H2s and H3s, and fill this with the SEO keywords. And the reason being is you can then edit this. Maybe you want to edit the SEO keywords. Maybe you then want to generate and then modify your different twos and H3s based on that, that global background and the competition. Let me just demonstrate. So I've already scraped this and it's in the cache. So if we click scrape now, it will be instantaneous and it loads all the data for us. So it's already saved in the database for us. So here's the global background that it generated. And then here are the competition H2s and H3s. And then here are the SEO keywords. So the first order of business, if you were to do it this way, would be to generate now your subheadings. So you can say, okay, I want 10 subheadings. And if you press option three, it will now use that background and use those H2s and H3s from the competition to come up with your H2s and H3s. So watch this. Oh, we lost our article title. There we go. There we go. Performance comparison, price evaluation, user experience and recommendation, notable upgrades in the MacBook Pro M3. So look at that. And then we have the final verdict, MacBook Pro M3 versus MacBook Pro M2. Awesome. Okay. Now, here's where I, this is going to be a high level video, but here's where we get a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper. I have to explain this to you. Previously, before SERP scraping, you could do one of two things to seed the AI's brain with this unique knowledge that it would not know about. You could put up to 1,200 words inside of the global background, and or you could come over here and put in a URL for a particular subheading that you wanted to scrape. Or you could put in background information for this particular subheading that the AI does not know about, okay? If that was previous, that's still what you're going to do if you're not using SERP scraping. But if you are using SERP scraping, then what you're going to do is leave, leave this how it is. Okay. You'll scrape the SERP. You'll leave this kind of how it is. And then if you have a URL that you do want scraped for this, maybe you're doing a product roundup and this is product one, this is product two. In those situations, maybe you would put the URL to the product in here, the URL to the product in here. Or you could alternatively put some background information in, okay? But there probably will be some headings, some subheadings that you don't want a URL for and you don't have any specific background information for. You just want the stuff from the SERP. In that situation, what will happen if the SERP has been scraped and you have this thing enabled, any subheadings that don't have a URL and don't have background information will use the SERP scraped summaries to then write about this particular subheading. I don't want to do a deep dive into how that all works. I'll explain it more in the directions link above. It's a little bit different from how it works in the past. And also you don't need a long global background if you're using the SERP scraping. In fact, all right, if the AI has a little bit of knowledge about this particular query, you can delete the global background to save a few pennies. You won't even need it in here. But if this is how to disassemble a Ford V8 engine or some kind of thing that the AI doesn't even have a, an idea about, having the global background from the SERP scrape could be useful in here. But the global background, again, from the SERP scrape is going to be a lot fewer words than that stereotypical 1200 word global background that you might be accustomed to. So if I were to go right now and click either of these buttons. It doesn't matter which one I click because we've already scraped the SERP. It will write the article and then it will also use those summaries to fill in any backgrounds that have no URL and no background in them, if that makes sense. Try not to confuse you. Here's the other way you could do it. Imagine we have not scraped the SERP yet. Just imagine we have not. It's not stored in cache. We'd set our article up like this. We'd come up with our different subheadings. I'm using option two here because we don't have that background to work with right now. All right, so we have our different H2s. We have our title. If I were to go over here and press any of these buttons right here with start SEO writer with scraping URL, start SEO writer, no scraping URLs, it will still scrape the SERP regardless of which button you press. 
because this is enabled. So if you don't want the SERP to be scraped or you don't want those hidden background summaries to be actually used, you can just come up here and disable this and then write your article. That's a little bit deeper than I wanted to get into, but I wanted to explain how that works. I know a lot of you really enjoy using the SEO writer and are probably gonna use it. So I wanted to at least do a little bit of a deep, deeper dive into there. Now there is caching. Caching is crazy powerful right now. Let me delete these and open up. Let's see. I wanna show you what this caching is because this is insane. I've already summarized this particular URL. I've already scraped it. The summary for this article is already in the database. So watch this. I'm gonna do a magic command now, the stereotypical summarize equal, and watch how fast this is. Control one, bam, it's already done because it's in the database right now. So this actually allows you to do something like this, write a Facebook post. So I can hit control A to highlight it all and hit control one. The URL is already scraped. The summary is already made. And so all it's doing now is, is writing that Facebook post based on that cached data. How freaking cool is that? I know for some of you are like, I don't understand what's going on. For some others of you, you're like, whoa, that is freaking amazing. Yes, that is freaking amazing. Now, finally, let's show you that super secret feature that I'm really enjoying. Penny Arcade. Now, check this out. I can take all of these URLs and paste them into Penny Arcade. Now, you can have the AI write articles for each one of these, and it will use the cache because I've already uh, stored all this stuff in the cache. Uh, but there's also this only summarize option in here. Now, you've seen this before, but watch how it works with cache. So we're going to call the job name test. We're not going to use a custom prompt, but we're going to use the default uh, GPT model, and we'll click proceed. Look at that. Instantaneously, we get five because we've already summarized this. It's already in the cache. So the summary cost was zero cents because it was stored in the cache. Here's the image URL. Here's the title. Here's the URL. Here's the summary. Now that's cool, but let me blow your mind a little bit more. So we'll go back in here, Penny Arcade. Let's put in two, just for sake of time. Only summarize. We're going to do test and then we'll do Dr. Seuss. So this is a custom prompt to write in the style of Dr. Seuss. And then we'll proceed. So right now, it's, it already has the summaries. Right? right now, what it's doing is just taking those summaries and applying those custom prompts. So here's our first text file. Logitech created a mic so nice, the blue snowball ice, a device for the wise. With a USB connection, it's easy to plug crystal clear audio like a sweet Somberg's hug. It's very easy to reprocess these things with different custom prompts uh, and save a ton of time because now you're using the cache. Now, let me show you one last really cool feature. So let's actually, let's take all this stuff and uh, we'll go to only summarize and make a new job name. And we won't do a custom prompt this time. You could if you wanted to, but just for the sake of time, we're, I'm not going to do that. There's a new feature, and this is output everything to a single CSV. So I'll check that, and I'll click proceed. And it's already done. Now watch this. I'm really excited about this. So here's our CSV file. Expand this a little bit. Okay, so here's the URL. And so we did five different URLs. Okay, so they're all in here. Here's the title for each one. Here's the summary for each one. It's all in CSV format. Got to like double click on it to expand it. And then if I had done a custom prompt or a translation, that would also be in here too. So what can you do with this? You can now import this to Google Sheets, or you can feed this to some kind of other external program. I don't know. There's so many different out there that can process CSVs and you can do all kinds of amazing different things with this with this new format you have. Imagine, for instance, you have a thousand different URLs. You've stored them all into the cache, and then you start either pulling the summaries or you start running a custom prompt, like a write a Facebook post, write a tweet, write a LinkedIn post about those thousand different URLs, and then have the output as a CSV file. You can do all of that now inside of ZimWriter. Whew, I don't know. Was that a, a high level overview? Was that a deep dive? I don't know. I wanted to give you enough so you can get started with all the cool features. I am super pumped. I am so excited to hear about how you guys are using this. Happy Black Friday. All right. I hope this is a really valuable present to you all. If you already have ZimWriter, it's absolutely free. This update was absolutely free to you. 
If you don't have ZenWriter, there's links down below. Definitely check it out. The prices will be going up soon, so definitely check out the links in the description. Join the Facebook group even if you don't want to get ZenWriter. We almost have 12,000 people in our ZenWriter private Facebook group. Amazing. Even if you don't use ZenWriter, great place to get SEO help, AI help, everything in between. Great group of people. Other than that, hey, thanks for watching. Good luck with your content generation, and I'll talk to you later.